Thank you so much. Well, as we look, it, it is still now making its way through the Caribbean, and its current location is 95 miles east of Punta Cana in the Dominican Republic. It's got 115 mile per hour wind, so it's still a category three. It's moving northwest a little faster now at about 12 miles per hour. The, the width of this thing, uh, tropical forest winds extend out 300 miles from the center, so you can still see plenty of wind, especially, see now this is on the backside of the system, and so a storm surge in this area here in the southwestern corner of Puerto Rico is very possible, so they're not quite out of the woods yet. We get into Thursday morning. Hispaniola, the northern shore, are going to see those heavy winds as this moves past. And then the Turks and Caicos, still hurricane force winds in and around, very tight uh, little gradient right around there. We're going to be watching that, and then it pushes on through on Friday. So the impacts we look at, Dominican Republic kind of lucks out a little bit. Storm surge, four to six feet. Winds about 75 miles per hour with four to eight inches of rain or more. But the Turks and Caicos we could have more devastation there. I mean, real serious problems with strong winds of up to 125 miles per hour, 10 to 15 foot waves, upwards of a foot of rain, and the storm surge could be very brutal. Again, we look for this to stay offshore of the United States right now. Most of the models, we run the assemble, the ensemble model, which shows the spaghetti uh, strings, and there are a couple that bring it out into Cape Hatteras, one or two, but for the most part, bunch it out away from a away from land, but we still can't rule that out. We've got a couple of areas, upper lows, of uh, upper areas of high pressure. Jose in between, keeping those from forming together and blocking Maria and keeping it close to shore. So, and then we've got another secondary system that may block it off, but right now we feel pretty good that it stays off offshore, but we still got four to five days to go, Ali, so anything could happen. And as you can see, we still have plenty of hurricane season left to go as well. So uh, we are not done yet. This is very reminiscent of uh, 2005, 2007, when we just kept churning out these storms. So, uh, And it still remains to be seen how much damage and how devastating it is in Puerto Rico, because they've still got winds howling and they still got yep. rain going. And they still have the uh, backside of that storm, which yes. is still pushing water in, uh, so that flooding becomes a very, very serious problem for them. Al, thanks as always. Today shows Al Roker. Uh, while Puerto Rico received the brunt of the storm, Maria also hit other islands in the Caribbean. This is a look at some of the damage from Dominica after Maria hit there as a Category 5 storm. Look at that. Just focus your eyes for a second on the damage in Dominica. Entire structures wiped out. It actually looks more in some places like a tornado than a hurricane. The island's main hospital roof was ripped off. Reports that as much of uh, 70, as many as 70 percent of roofs on homes on the island are gone. At least seven people there were killed. The U.S. Virgin Islands were also hit hard again. For more on that, I'm joined by Congresswoman Stacey Blaskett, who represents the U.S. Virgin Islands. I mean, I, I got to tell you, I, I, Congresswoman, I can't believe you and I continue to meet and talk about this. What's going on? Have you, have you had a chance to check back in and see how things are in the Virgin Islands? Sure. I've been on the phone with people, texting with people all night, um, had a chance to talk to FEMA, was just texting with the uh, general of our National Guard. Um, you know, we, as you know, Stephanie was down on the island yep. of St. Thomas and St. John last week which hit, were hit by Irma. And now we're having to deal with Maria that hit the island of St. Croix. It hit St. Croix, the outer uh, wall of the eye hit the island of St. Croix 175 plus miles an hour last night huh. um, while it was a category five. We're assessing the damage now. We've had roofs collapse, of course, down poles. Um, our utility system is down. Uh, we've had some damage at the airport and that island was used as the hub to do transportation and relief to the island of St. Thomas and St. John. St. Thomas is flooding. Uh, most of the downtown area is flooded out. This is going to be a lot of work. And, and by the way, so St. Croix was a staging area for some of the stuff going on in the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Saint San Juan, Puerto Rico, was also a staging area for water that was going out to the rest of the, the, the Caribbean. So we've got problems that the places that were places that you went for safety or you had the supplies coming from are now d damaged as well. Sure. I mean, you know, when people found out about Maria on the island of St. Croix going to the grocery stores, there wasn't water there because the people of St. Croix had been sending it St. St. Thomas. And now the, the families that had opened up their homes on St. Croix for the young people on St. Thomas to come and continue school 
we're facing that issue as well on St. Croix. This is going to be, as the mayor of San Juan said, months of utility out of power post FEMA, FEMA post-recovery, um, in terms of building, that there's support for us in legislation that gives tax credits to developers, that treats us Uh, safer structures and resilient structures that allow the Virgin Islands to come out uh, even better than they were going into it. I, I always enjoy talking to you, uh, Representative, but I, I'm sorry that we've had to talk so many times about this topic, but we will continue to because we will continue may, may to... May I ask, may I be able to give, there is um, an emergency number because we do have people that are trapped in their homes. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to call 340-773- two two four four if you are stuck in your home and you need a way out first responders are the lines are open and they'll take those calls and get to you all right i'm going to tweet that out as well the number is three four zero seven seven three two two four four representative stacy plaskett we'll talk again soon Okay. All right, up next, uh, we're going to talk about health care. President Trump is cranking up the pressure on Republicans to pass an Obamacare repeal, any repeal, it seems. And the Graham-Cassidy plan is gaining momentum on Capitol Hill, but it's also getting a lot of criticism, some of it from late-night host Jimmy Kimmel. This guy, Bill Cassidy, just lied right to my face. He agreed to that.